New items in the GitHub shop, a great new small language model, code font updates, and the nerdiest Eurovision entry of the year. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. So my shirt this week is actually related to some news. It is a new item in the GitHub shop from our Sport Tech collection. Uh, the sweatshirt that I'm wearing is called the Collegiate Sweatshirt, and you know, it fits the vibe. I like it. I've also got another hoodie with me, this one right here. Um, this is the Sportique logo patch hoodie, complete with um, embroidered um, Mona logo, you know, because Octocats are better than crocodiles. There are some other new items in the store too, including a new travel backpack, some tumblers, and a new t-shirt that comes in different naturally dyed colors. And keeping it collegiate, there is also a varsity jacket. You can check out all the items at thegithubshop.com, and I've got that linked down below too. Speaking of swag, conferences always have swag, which is my very awkward segue into reminding you all that Microsoft Build will be taking place in a couple of weeks, May 21st through May 23rd. In fact, online and in person in Seattle. I'm gonna be at Microsoft Build, so if you tune into the live stream, you might see my face, but if you're in person and you see me, please say hello. There's gonna be a ton of AI content and also some GitHub Copilot um, updates, and of course, we will cover all the big announcements after the show right here, and I've got a link uh, for, about Microsoft Build linked down below. Speaking of Copilot, GitHub Copilot chat in GitHub Mobile is now generally available. And this feature allows you to chat with Copilot in the GitHub Mobile app, and you can ask questions, get code suggestions, and more. And it's a really great way to get help on the go. And I've got more details about GitHub Copilot chat in the GitHub Mobile app, um, available on the GitHub blog. Say GitHub one more time, Christina. I've got that link down below. And to round out some product updates, Dependabot, our tool for monitoring your repos and alerting you when there's a known security vulnerability, can now be enabled on repos or organizations to run Dependabot update jobs as a GitHub action, both for hosted and self-hosted runners. And even better, running Dependabot does not count towards your GitHub actions minutes, meaning that using Dependabot continues to be free for everybody. Uh, but what's great about moving to the actions is that this is really good for anyone who has some on-premise resources like private uh, registries that previously we're not visible to Dependabot. And it also means you can script Dependabot into your own workflows and pipelines. And I've got more details about how all this works in the blog post linked down below in the description. Okay, so a few weeks ago, we talked about some new open AI models. And of course, right after we filmed, Microsoft released its new Phi 3 mini family of open models. And what's really great about the about Phi 3 is that these are specifically designed um, smaller language models, meaning that they're optimized to run on local devices and to cost less when they're run in the cloud. And Phi 3 mini is available in two context lengths right now, uh, 4K and 128K tokens. And as I said, you can uh, run it locally, you can run it on Azure AI Studio uh, through Hugging Face or via Olama. And because it's an open model, it's already been adapted by uh, a bunch of other projects and tooling too. There's some really great uh, stuff that I've got linked to in the announcement blog, the model cards on Hugging Face, and there's also a cool project called uh, transformers.js, which lets you run transformers directly in the browser, no server required, and someone has already updated that to, to work with Phi3. Now, I've played with Phi3 a bit, and it is really impressive what it can do with such a small model, especially on local machines, and as I said, all the details are linked down below. Now moving on to some font news. Cascadia Code, the open source font that Microsoft first released as part of Windows Terminal, um, and it's become one of my favorite monospace fonts. It recently received a huge update, the first update in more than three years, and this update adds in some great new features, including support for quadrants and sextants and octants. Um, and the TLDR on, on, on those is that they're characters that can be used to generate graphics in the browser see this fun example, um, as well as some large type pieces for better terminal customization. But the biggest news is that there's now official nerd font variants of Cascadia Code, which is the standard font that includes code lit ligatures and Cascadia Mono, which is just the monospace style. And that means that you don't have to patch the nerd font variants anymore. It's actually like part of the glyph set. And so I love this. I love Cascadia Code. Um, I actually wrote the script uh, using Cascadia Code in VS Code. Uh, and I've, I've got links to that um, 
and their GitHub repo down below. And now it is time for my GitHub project spotlight. And this is where I highlight a great project from the community. And this time I wanna call out a project called Secret Llama. And this is a fully private LLM chatbot that runs entirely in the browser and it supports Mistral and Llama 3. And even better, the creator says that those new Phi 3 mini models that we talked about earlier are going to be added soon, maybe even by the time you see this. And you can run it in your browser from secretllama.com. Uh, the first time it loads, it's gonna take some time to download the model in, in, in your browser. Um, but of course, you can self-host this too. I love projects like this because it's a really great proof of concept uh, and marrying kind of the best of these open source, you know, AI models, as well as technologies like Web LLM and, and WebAssembly. And so I've got the GitHub repo and the main site linked down below, but this is really great. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So by the time you see this, we might already know the winner of the Eurovision Song Contest, but I did want to call out my favorite entry, regardless of who ultimately takes the crown, and that is Finland's entry, a song called No Rules by Windows 95 Man. I've actually been a fan of Windows 95 Man for about six years. We even tried to get him to perform at a Microsoft event once, but I think the branding people like wouldn't let us. Anyway, you can check this performance out from a couple months ago. It was great. I'm really hoping he wins because, you know, come on. It's Windows 95 Man. It's great. And that's gonna do it for me. Let me know your thoughts on Windows 95 Man or any of our other stories that we talked about in the comments down below, or you know, if you had another Eurovision entry you liked better. And if you like this episode, please give us a like on YouTube. It helps out the algorithm. And subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.